everyone, Dr. Tanner Dobson, and in this video we're going to be doing a root canal and a crown prep on this lower left second premolar that ended up with a big cavity into the nerve. Um, here's a PA showing that there's no lesion but the tooth tested negative to EPT and that's a failing implant uh, that uh, we're going to talk about later on in the, the video here. But uh, getting on to the procedure, the clinical footage, we're going to begin by administering a mandibular nerve block. And before we get our preliminary impression, I'm just going to put a little bit of flowable composite into the missing tooth structure. And then we're going to light cure it and then get our preliminary impression for making the temp at the end. Give that material a minute or two to set and we're satisfied with that preliminary. Anytime I'm doing a crown uh, and a endo at the same appointment, I'll usually uh, do the occlusal reduction first just to get us that much closer to the orifice of the root canal and then we'll remove our tooth decay with a slow speed round carbide burr until we're pretty much into the pulp chamber and when we looked at the PA of this tooth we could see that it was a pretty wide open canal so we knew we'd have a, a pretty simple endo going to put on a rubber dam now that we're ready to start uh, the root canal proper and I'm going to place some block out this is just liquid dam light cure it and then I'll use a month's discovery burr to discover the orifice once we get a stick out of our endo explorer we're going to begin by using our SX shaping burr with some RC prep to open up the coronal third. And then we'll irrigate and begin taking our files down to length, starting with a glide path file. And I'll clip the apex locator directly onto the file and then uh, take the glide path file down to the red line to verify that we have patency out the apex. And then we'll irrigate and then begin taking our the rest of our shaping files to the green line on the apex locator. We'll take our S1, this is a 1504, and then our 2504 down to the green line with our C prep. Irrigating between files. I use full strength hypochlorite. This is a 2506 which usually binds pretty aggressively at the apex. So I'll take it down pretty slowly. Irrigate, and then for the last two files, I'll use the endo activator. I know some endodontists that like to use endo activator between each file, but I find that probably for the last two is likely adequate for sterilization of the canal. And I'll put a little bit of RC prep on the activator and give it a good shake for 15 seconds or so. Another irrigation and then our final file, in this case we took a 3504 down to the green line. And then we'll do a final irrigation and endo activation for a good 15-20 seconds to sterilize the canal final irrigation and then we're going to begin drying the canal with paper points. I'll usually use F1 paper points to dry. Usually one or two sizes smaller than the master file to ensure that we have all of the hypochlorite out of the canal. A second paper point comes out mostly dry. And that one is fully dry so We'll take our sealer and begin uh, placing it as apically as we can into the canal. This is Diadent Bio Sealer, which is a bioceramic sealer. And then we'll take our master cone, kind of tamp down the sealer material a little bit and then place it to length. Snip the excess and then sear off the coronal portion down to the orifice with a heated plugger, just like in dental school. And then we will do some last minute refinements before we place our core build up. I actually had some comments on a video saying that uh, I should 
prep down into the orifice or down into the canal a little bit more for retention of the core. So I did that in this case. Just gonna use a Toffelmeyer to matrix the tooth for the core buildup. And I'm a huge fan of Equia Forte. So I actually use that as a core buildup material as well because I've had good success with it. And then we're going to, like I say, take down the GP a couple of millimeters into the canal for retention of our core. Anytime I'm bonding a glass restoration, I'll etch for five seconds, dry thoroughly, or rinse thoroughly, dry, add our Equia Forte, which will tamp down with the cotton pellet to ensure adaptation, and then I'll usually wait four minutes to set. We'll remove the band and the rubber dam, and then we'll get a post-op PA. I'll usually just hold the x-ray and then have uh, Jackie expose it. This is, uh, we're happy with the endo, but this is a palliative uh, implant. Uh, we talked about options and the option of preemptively explanting and then placing bone graft. Patient just wanted to keep it, water pick every day, try to keep it for as long as possible. Once it gets mobile, then remove it, probably. Uh, talk about options at that point. So we're gonna begin uh, our crown prep with the occlusal reduction first. I'll use the mirror to hold the tongue back for the lingual aspect if the patient's tongue is in the way. And then we'll begin our axial prep on the buccal surface as much as we can. A little bit of decay on the buccal margin that goes a bit subgingival that we'll have to push back with cord before we take our scan. And then we will uh, finish the lingual axial reduction from the nine o'clock position using direct vision. This is a KS1 burr coarse, coarse grit. And then we'll finish our lingual reduction and then retract the gum tissue down to the margin with a size one cord. And I'll just pack it in with a perio probe. I like to keep my armamentarium as minimalistic as possible. And I find that these perio probes work just fine. I've used cord packing instruments and I, I was never a huge fan. So perio probe to get the cord down, verifying that we have access direct visual access to our margin circumferentially. And then when we're satisfied, we'll take our scan. I have a Trios 4 that I'll, I'll be looking back and forth between the intraoral and the screen to verify that we have all of our services captured. Big fan of the Trios 4. I will, uh, I'll take the scan and then send it to my designer. Here's the scan. I'll send it to the designer and then I'll actually get the design back and then I'll mill it in house with my milling machine personally. And maybe I'll show that in a future video here. Uh, and then once we have taken our scan, we're going to temporize the tooth using uh, the preliminary impression that we took at the beginning. Going to load it up with our integrity temp material and then seat the tray back in place for 60 seconds and then after a minute we'll give it a wiggle and hope that the thing comes off which it did in this case we'll take the cord out actually placed another second cord just in the buckle aspect there where it went subgingival and then we'll begin to shape our temporary with a coarse wheel soft flex disc until we're at the margins. And I learned from Dentaltown, uh, somebody was saying, how do you get your, um, or how do you polish your temps? And somebody just made a comment said, I just add some bond and then I cure it and then it's totally smooth. So that's what I've been doing. I, I ended up uh, with a void, so I patched it with some flowable composite. Gonna check the bite and then take everything out so that there's no contact on the temp. And then we're going to cement it with our 
temp bond and uh, clean up the temp cement and that's it for this appointment. We'll get the patient back next week to cement the crown.